the reason why there's wind turbines up here is because what's going on in, in these oils has come out of a technology that was developed for the wind turbine industry. Okay. And in our search for, to, for a solution created by the two-car draft situation in NASCAR, we found the answer here. What did so, you find? Well, okay. Um, what you have is, the problem with these turbines is, who wants to be the guy changing the oil in this thing? Right? It's out, these, this is the, um, the wind farm that's in Denmark, out in the ocean. Right? So, it's way out in the ocean. Who wants to go climb up here and change oil in the thing? Well, the problem is, it's because it's hard to get to, not change the oil very regularly. So, the oil that is thick enough to protect this thing in a, on a 100 degree day in the summer, it's probably too thick on a sub-zero day in the winter, and vice versa, right? Um, so that, that's an issue that, that they have to deal with in the wind turbine industry. These gearboxes are designed to last 30 years. In practice, they're lasting six or seven years. That's it. Then they're having failures because of the flow rate change in the oil not being able to handle it. We like to think about it as your favorite maple syrup, right? You get out of the refrigerator and it's cold, then you pour it in your hot pancake, what does it do? It runs everywhere, right? It's the viscosity of your maple syrup changed, right? It got thinner because all oils get thinner as they get hotter, right? In the oil parlance, that's called viscosity index. That's the fancy word we use to describe that rate of change. And if it is, it's a low viscosity index of, say, if 100, you have a fairly smooth slope this way, right? From freezing to the boiling point of water. Whereas it has a higher viscosity index, say flatter, right? Less change over a range of temperature. The synthetic 220 with the VI 155 flows better at low temperature, but holds its viscosity better at high temperature, right? So this is better for temperature extremes, right? If you relate that to an engine, right? Well, what is that? How does that translate to a guy who's got a car, right? Well, the reality is for a Viscosity grade with a low VI of 100, which is the reference point, 6,000 RPM engine, 400 horsepower, at low temperature, he's got a good oil film and they're protecting those components, right? Temperature goes up, nothing else changed, right? Still same RPM, still the same load, but because of the VI being low, temperature increase, now your viscosity thinned out. So now you're getting wear. Well, if you raise the viscosity index, same RPM, same load, same temperature, higher viscosity index, now you've still got an oil film, right? Now it goes back to what we were experiencing at Daytona and Talladega with the two-car draft. The guy behind pushing is doing 280 degree oil temperatures. The guy in front being pushed is running 180, right? So you got a 100 degree temperature change there, right? So the oil that's thick enough to protect the guy at 280, is actually costing horsepower when you're up in front because you're not going around the racetrack this way the whole time. Every few laps, they change, right? So our goal as a race team was we got to go faster. We need to find a way to keep our viscosity more stable whether I'm pushing or being pushed, right? So we just went and started looking. That's where we found this information that came from the wind turbine industry. This, again, viscosity, Index is just, you know, rate of change. Your conventional mineral oils, your old school stuff has been around forever. The viscosity index is about 100. With advanced refining techniques, they can bump that up to about 120. That's as far as it can go. Your synthetics that have been around, you know, 20, 30 years now, they can get to about 145, about as much as they can go, which is hey, it's a big improvement from where you were before. But it still wasn't enough for the wind turbine industry, right? They had to develop a next generation uh, synthetic base oil, the, the viscosity index can reach 200, right? That's where we started to go here. Says, now we have the ability to have an oil that can flow at low temperature, maintain that oil film when we're at 280, but have the, that lighter oil that's actually perfect at 180 and can still protect at 280. So that's where we came to, and that's really, this is breakthrough technology that was really just introduced, just now coming to market, you know, here in 2012. In fact, 
we had to buy all the pre-production samples from our supplier to be able to even be, begin to blend these components and these products this year. You know, so we've got all these new products. You know, there's 12 of them uh, that are all based off this core technology that was basically went from wind turbines to Talladega, and now it's out there for production, you know, high performance production cars. For the most part, you know, obviously, you know, us being a race team, we're more focused on the racing technology part of it. You know, and we did you know, the, you know, the carting oil. You know, a four-stroke cart engine is going to run wide open throttle for five minutes straight. A little bit of the engine, so that same concept applies there. We now have an AMA uh, Supercross team. Uh, James Stewart's riding for us, and so we needed to develop a product that could work in that uh, single 450 engine with a wet clutch. Because now you got to take care of the clutch and the engine, and you can't put the friction modifiers in there because it hurts the clutch. So you had to find a way to make horsepower without hurting the clutch. So the technology applied there, obviously for racing, we want that you know, for qualifying and for endurance racing. We can use that technology for both of them. But then we had a lot of people coming to us over the years saying, well, what should I run in my 2010 Camaro? Right? I went and bought this thing brand new, and then I'm going to put a new can in there. I'm going to put an exhaust on it. Well, you go from 500 horsepower engine to a 650 horsepower engine pretty quick. Well, as you raise that level of performance in the engine, now you raise the need for protection. So these new prop, this new synthetic base oil enabled us to make for the first time a product that could actually meet their requirements and still take care of the catalytic converters and all that kind of stuff that's so important in a modern production car. You know, we've had oils for a long time that work good for your older muscle cars and that kind of stuff, but your pre-catalytic converter cars that they didn't have those issues. Right, so now we've got you know a range of products that encompass all of that.